What's up guys, this is Thomas from Stylized Station. Today I've made something a little special for you. I've made some stylized fur. Now this is available to all my patrons at patreon.com slash stylized station. If you want to pick up some really cool materials and smart materials and stuff, head over there and become a patron and support the community. Now, if you're watching this video, it's probably because you like watching materials and how stuff are made. So go ahead and subscribe for more tasty treats like this one. Now let's go ahead and make this material. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to get the initial shape down. So let's do that first. The easiest way to do this that I find works really well is with the waveform node. And I'm gonna change the wave number to one. Decrease the noise so it's consistent. Drop the pattern down to this first one. Drop the max all the way down. Size min is low. <clears throat> and you can tweak it and we'll be tweaking it a little bit as we go here. So next thing we're gonna blur this. We're gonna use blur high quality. and drop the intensity. You can see that without the blur, it kind of keeps the hard edges and that's not what we want. Excuse me. We just want to be able to soften the edges just like this. And that's perfect. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get this standing face up. So transform. And 90 degrees. Perfect. Clockwise. <clears throat> next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that it's kind of cut off a little bit. We're going to do that by pushing. Now oh, it's still set to tiling. So what we can do is we can set the tiling to absolute by going to tiling mode, absolute, no tiling, and that should cut it out. Perfect. So we'll pull this down. We're going to pull this down a little bit just so it goes under and it gets cut off here and we'll bring it down just like that. So we've now got a nice flowing shape. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we add some gradient to it, just so it's not a flat shape, because when we put this into designer and we start tiling it, it's just gonna pop up flat and then kind of bevel a little bit and turn down. We need this to be a nice gradient curve all the way. So let's do that next. Let's add a gradient. Top down gradient and we're gonna blend it. Earn use the multiply. So you can see here, it's got a nice little gradient across the top. And just so for an additional effect to get a nice line, we're going to blend it again with another gradient. So let's blend it with this gradient here. I like this one linear three, but it's the wrong way around. So we're going to use another, another transformation node. I'm just going to copy and paste this one. <clears throat> And there we go. This one was already set to rotate 90 degrees, so it's now 90 degrees. I'm gonna pop this blend out. Okay, so you can see this is how the gradient's supposed to work. What we can do probably to help this out a little bit is we can maybe shrink the gradient. So I'm going to shrink it. And multiply full opacity. That looks a little better, much better. And you can see it's very subtle, but this has given us kind of a nicer, nicer gradient in the middle, a gradient down and gradient off of each edge. Maybe shrink it a little more and see what, see what this looks like. And pull these up, pull this down. <clears throat> yeah, I like that. That's much a little sharper anyway. So we're going to, next we're going to make sure that we um, tweak it a little bit and have the functionality or have the granularity to edit it when we need to. So we're going to add a levels node here just plug it in. Um, we don't really need to mess with it too much right now. Um, this is really just going to be in for the future. Um, when we add the sampling notes, we've got this nice curved shape, very clean. 
And now we're going to add the tile sampler. And we're going to start to build the actual material. So this is the pattern. We're only going to use one pattern, really. This is going to be super complicated. Let's up this in a bit. Pattern is pattern input. You can see now, here we go. It's now using the material. <clears throat> up the scale as much as I can. And let's set this to 20 by 20. Now we can start to mess with it a little bit. So scales, let's scale it down a little bit just for now. We're going to tweak the scale of it so they're different sizes. Position, you can make it as random as you want. At the end of the day, all these black spots we're going to want filled in a little more to replicate fur. So even now we can kind of up the scale, decrease the randomness, because if you increase it, you get a lower threshold and you get tiny pieces like this, which we don't want. So scale random to about here. And then when we come to the rotation, we're going to only rotate and a random rotation slightly because we all want them pointing in the same direction but we want a little bit of variance so 0 0.3 0 0.5 something like that even even 0.5 is looking a little much but if you want more of a disheveled look with your hair go ahead with 0.5 let's go point 0 0.03 kind of like the way that looks it's a little organized <clears throat> the only thing I'd, i want to do is to add a bit of flair to it is we can kind of angle it let's angle it this way with color we're going to randomize it a little bit just like that to give it a little more depth. And that's pretty much it. We've got the basic shape now is just kind of tweaking and adding colors. Like I said, it's very, very simple to do. So let's add a, uh, in our normal mode here, or normal node, let's add a normal. We can start plugging this into the actual uh, cube here and we can start to see how this looks. With roughness, this is just gonna be a uniform color set to a lighter gray. So if you don't know, black means shiny, White means not shiny, so we're going to go, as you can see, as I go to black, it's shinier. We're going to need a nice flat color. Stylized colors are often quite um, very high on roughness, and I kind of like that. Metallic is either a one or a zero, yes or no, metallic or not. So we're going to use a uniform color, and since hair is not a metal, we're going to stick with black. Now the height map can get plugged in from here. And we're missing one thing actually. We've got base color, normal, roughness, metallic, and height. We're missing the ambient occlusion. So we're going to create another output. And we're going to add an item and we're going to add ambient occlusion and name it AO. And then we're going to add an ambient occlusion node. Pop it right here line it up nicely <clears throat> and we can start plugging in everything we want um, same with the color we can also add a color just a base color I'm going to be changing this eventually but let's plug in the base color and let's change this to a lighter color so we can see our angles much better I'm also going to want to change this to the rounded cylinder and let's start plugging stuff in so plugging in the normal populating the normal data height and ambient occlusion. Now this isn't going to kick in because it hasn't been instanced into the map. So we're going to right click on here, drag it in and ambient occlusion. It'll, you can see, here we go. Now we've actually got the occlusion added with this. There's a few tweaks I'd like to do normally for stylized work. So I always have the intensity. One is never enough for stylized work. So it's always anywhere between 10, um, 10, 20, even 40 sometimes, uh, it looks really good and really makes the um, really makes the fur or anything you're working with pop. So let's go with 15 for now and kind of keep it a calmer, like a calmer level. And we can tweak this as we go with the height. You can also mess with the height depth. So this is just going to increase the inclusion, occlusion as you go. I actually kind of like this. It adds a little more bit black to it, which we can, we can mess with later. <clears throat> okay. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to quickly make a um, quick little trick that I like to do to show you to add a bit of um, add a bit of more stylized look to it. This is a quick little trick is we're going to create a curve 
not sure, curvature smooth. <clears throat> and that's going to be plugged in from our normal map because it takes a normal output. And what it's going to do is it's going to highlight, I don't know if you can see that, but it's going to highlight all of the, as you can see, this is what it looks like like this. And then once we plug it in, it kind of adds a highlight to all the curvature of it. And curvature and highlights are a big part of stylized art. So that's, that's a really great thing to use. Um, so the last thing we're going to do to add color um, before I tweak it a little bit is we're going to add the gradient. So we're going to throw some colors in. So I'm going to start with a nice low brown color. I'm going to delete this one. Let's get that in the middle. So let's start with like a darker brown color and let's see where this goes. Add some nice dark colors into the fur and the base. And these medium grays, whoops, these medium gray colors. So along the lines here, let's make these even lighter. Maybe more saturated. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then this one, a little more brown, but I like to add a little bit of orange tinge into it. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Maybe a little too dramatic. So let's pull back on the orange. And it's almost missing an extra color here. So I'm going to add another one. And add some coloring in here. I just want to see what this is going to highlight. OK, so <clears throat> let's add some ambient occlusion to that or add some more black to it to make it really pop out. Let's pull it forward. And let's increase this slightly so this pops out a little more. Drop the orange, make it a little more orange. And we can <clears throat> add some tessellation to it. Just to give it a bit more detail. And this looks really good to me. Let's see if I can pick up this, make this gradient look a little better. Maybe brown. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so we've got nice black highlights now. Let's make this gray, but give it some orange as well. Maybe a little more brown. And a little more yellow in there now. It looks better with brown. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to tweak the, the first seems a little long to me. So let's just try and maybe tweak it a little bit and add some changes to it. So you can, it's also good practice to see how you can warp things and make them kind of bend to whatever you want them to do. <clears throat> you can do this in a few ways also. So you can increase the size max and it'll increase the width of everything, make it a little thicker. Like if you do make it fat like this, you can see some nice thick fur. If you thin it out, you're gonna get some really thin, coarse looking strands but I prefer it like this right now. If you want to increase the variety or the harshness of it, you want more. This actually can be used for leaves as well. Um, so if you want to use like kind of thorny leaves, you can always increase the noise and decrease the blur that we've put on it. And pattern is not super useful, um, but it does add texture when you need it. So I guess it does have, um, it can have its uses. But for now, we'll leave it at this. This looks pretty good. If we tweak our levels a little bit, we can make it pop out a little more. And that looks pretty good to me. 
pull the black in to get rid of that base a little bit. Let's pull the white in. And last check to make sure I missed, didn't miss anything. It looks good to me. Just curious if I decrease it. Yeah, as I thought, you get a bit of a thicker, more leaf-like look. And if I increase it, let's say 40, you get more of a stretched out, stretched out look. What if we go 40 and 40? Um, doesn't look great to me. So let's go back to 20 and 20. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks there. Now, if you wanted to add variation to this, we can also add some um, fur variation and some patterning um, by adding an extra pattern input. And when I enter two, it's going to clear out a bunch of spots in here. And then it would basically randomize and put in the new pattern that we put in there. So you can add, if you're using this as leaves, you can, you can kind of get rid of this and throw in some ground, some rocks, some things that pop up and fun stuff like that. But for now, we'll leave it at one. This is the way I like it. I like the way it looks like this, just for this tutorial anyway. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, guys. I absolutely love making these for you. And if you like the work that I do, head over to patreon.com slash stylizedstation and you can support me for as much as you want. If you want to give me a million dollars, I mean, fine. I'll take a million dollars. I'll take a million dollars. That's it for me, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. And again, I'll see you in the next video.